Hi there, glad to have you along. We're going to be exploring graphing lines in the next couple of videos that I'm going to make. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on graphing lines when you know a point that the line passes through and you know the slope of a line. All right, And we'll do another uh, video later on where you're trying to graph lines using intercepts um, on the graph. All right, so you will learn to sketch the graph of a line using a slope and one of its points. Quite simple. And in every thing that we're going to do in this video after this first slide anyway, what I'm going to do is give you the equation of a line. And from the equation of the line, you're going to be able to figure out a point that the line passes through and the slope and be able to make the graph. But first, let me just show you how to take a point that a line passes through, any point at all, and the slope, and to go ahead and make the graph of the line. All right, so graph a line passing through the indicated point, negative 1, 2 in this first example, with the slope 2 thirds. Well, this truly couldn't be a simpler process. Of course, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph the point that we know the line passes through. So um, negative 1, 2 right here. Let's go ahead and plot that point. And then you see the slope is 2 thirds. Now, you need to know how to interpret slope, but I think most of you are pretty comfortable with the slope being a ratio between the rise and run for a line. Many of you might know what I mean when I'm saying that's the rate of change. It's how quickly the vertical change occurs for the horizontal change of a graph. And in this case, for every three units of horizontal change, the vertical change is going to be two units. All right. And so really to simplify that, what I'm trying to say here, um, once we have our first point graphed on the line, all we have to do is take advantage of that rise and run. That tells me to go up two units for every three units to the right. So go up two, right, three, and go ahead and plot a point. And at that point, you've now got, or once you've plotted that point, you've now got two points with which to graph your line. Now, before I actually draw the line, I want to show you one more thing that people don't often think of, but it's a great little trick. Um, most of the time, people see the rise and the run, and they just go ahead and graph it exactly the way it is. For instance, positive two-thirds here, they say go up two and right three. Now, let's suppose that this had been the point that I was given, and I was asked to go up two over three. Well, then it would go off the grid, wouldn't it? And so sometimes it's useful to think of that slope a little bit differently in order to make the graph fit a little bit better. In this case, it wasn't necessary, but humor me here. If the slope is two-thirds, then we could write it as positive two over three, but couldn't we also write that as negative two divided by negative three? Those are both equal to positive two-thirds, aren't they? All right. And the reason you might want to do that, the negative two over negative three thing, is just so you could, like I said, kind of reverse the graph a little bit and fit it on if you wouldn't fit the graph otherwise. So let's say we would go down two and left three. Well, that would give us another point that would fit on this graph. You can hopefully see that these points are collinear with one another, and so all we've got to do now is go ahead and graph the line that goes through them. There you go. That's how you graph a line, given its slope and its y-intercept. And I'll show you again with this other one really quickly just to show you how easy it truly is. We're going to graph the line that goes through 3, 0 that has a slope of negative 3. So let's go ahead and plot the point 3, 0 right there. And then hopefully you can think of how you would write that slope as a fraction. It's helpful to think of it in fraction form whenever you're trying to graph. That would be negative 3 over 1, which would tell me that I would go left 3 units for every 1 unit that I go up. And so we would start here at the point 3, 0, and we would go up 3 and left 1 and place a point. Or the alternative, instead of going, well, I guess I, I already did the backwards thing, didn't I? This would have told me to go down three and right one, wouldn't I? Now, I went up three and left one. Why could I do that? Because I could easily have moved that negative sign to the denominator here and made that a positive three over negative one. And the slope still would have been negative three. It's just that I would have gone to the up and to the left instead of down and to the right like this was telling me to do. All right, now let me go down to the right since I went the other way to begin. And here's the second line. Easy, right? All right, so continuing on, I told you that really what we're ultimately going to do here is we're going to be graphing lines 
um, when we're given their equation. And there are two forms of linear equations that give you the exact information that I just showed you to graph with. One of those being point-slope form. Point-slope form tells you about a line, exactly what its name it applies. It tells you a point that the line goes through, and it tells you the slope of the line. And you may know that point-slope form looks like this. Y minus Y1 is equal to M times X minus X1. And what the Y1 and X1 represent are the Y and X coordinates respectively of a point that the line passes through. And M, of course, is slope or gradient if you prefer to use that term, as we often do. And so if you look at these two equations, looking at the one in blue, first of all, you can see that it has Y minus 2 and an X plus 1. Now, when you're trying to figure out the coordinates of the point that the graph passes through, typically you just use the opposite of the sign of each of these things. So we would say that our x1 is negative 1. And see, if you're subtracting x1, minus negative 1 will be the same thing as plus 1, right? So this graph goes through the point negative 1, comma, and then whatever you're subtracting from y is your y1, so that would be 2. It goes to the point negative 1, 2, and then the slope is just this 1 fourth right there. So all I have to do to make that graph is graph the point negative 1, 2 here. Then use the slope, and I can simply just go up 1 and write 4. That would be 1, 4 here. And then I've got the line. Easy, right? Now the second graph is going through the point negative 4, negative 3. And it has a slope of 2. Alright, so negative 4, negative 3 right here. And then the slope is 2, and I could think of that as 2 over 1. So of course I can just go up 2, right 1, and I could keep doing that if I like. Uh, this will be sufficient though, up to right one. I'll tell you what, I'll do that a few more times just to help my line be a little straighter. And there we go. So that's all you've got to do to graph an equation whose, well, a line whose equation is written in point slope form. Well, finally, I'd like to go through how you graph an equation, the line whose equation is written in slope intercept form. And I'm fairly confident that you recognize slope-intercept form as being a linear equation that's written in the form y equals mx plus b, or y equals mx plus c in many Just like point-slope form does, what slope-intercept form does is it tells you a point and the line, or sorry, a point and the slope of a line, and it tells you a very special point that the line goes through. It tells you its intercept, and more specifically, it's y-intercept. All right, so the b, as I think you're aware, is the y-intercept, and the b here is negative 4. What that tells me is that this graph goes through the point 0, negative 4. The, the x-coordinate of a y-intercept is always 0. And then you see here the slope is 5 halves because that corresponds to the m. So all I would have to do to graph that line is go to the point 0, negative 4, And then use the slope, which that would tell me to go up 5 over 2 from this point. So up 5, right 2. Got a second point on the line. I've got the line. Well, I kind of missed it. I'll fix that. There, a little better. All right. And then the next point, or the next equation that I'm trying to graph I can tell from the value of b that the y-intercept for that graph is going to be the point 0, 1. So, bada bing, we've got the y-intercept graph, one, the point that we know the line passes through. Uh, the slope is negative 2 fifths, so we can go down 2 from there, and then to the right 5 units. And here's our line. Voila, that's how you graph something, a, a line whose equation is written in slope-intercept form. And more broadly speaking for this video, that's how you use a point that a line passes through and its slope in order to make a graph. 
One last note. Hopefully you notice the slopes of those last two lines that I graphed were opposite reciprocals. And I hope that that is significant to you because it does mean that those lines are perpendicular to one another, right? I always like to squeeze a little bit of extra information in these when I can. All right, guys, hope this helps you with your graphing. Thanks for watching. Later.